Um, so this is uh, Zimmer splint uh, material. It's available in different sizes, different widths, which you would choose according to the width of the person's finger or thumb that you were going to use it on. Um, so this is often a child, we would use the thinner one. It's got aluminium on the back, so it can be bent if you're needing to use it in a particular configuration. Uh, and then it has foam on the front, which then makes it safe to use against the patient's skin. You need to cut it to the length that you uh, would require, and you need to make sure that when you cut it, there aren't any sharp bits on it. So you'll need to set a, a good quality pair of scissors. And the idea is to cut a slight curve on it, similar to the one that, is, that it comes with from the manufacturer. And then just to be absolutely certain, to be on the safe side, there's nothing sharp on there, we put a piece of elastoplast over the end to keep that safe as well. So this uh, uh, splint material can be used for anywhere, anything where you've got a fracture um, in the part of the finger, so the distal phalanx or the proximal phalanx, um, and you want to stabilise it to keep the patient without pain until they're seen um, by a hand specialist. Uh, and indeed, sometimes our uh, treatment, ongoing treatment for it uh, will be that, but it's particularly good when they've been seen and assessed in an emergency department or a minor injuries unit. And we don't yet know what the definitive treatment is going to be, but they need a splint in order to um, maintain them without too much pain whilst they're waiting to be seen. So if I, if I show you how to put it on, the important thing is, so from the aspects of safety, there's two, the two things. One is making sure it's not got any sharp bits on the end. And the other is not obviously to um, put it on too tight. So um, you are going to use a circumferential tape. So you need to make sure that your tape has got some give in it, such as the elastoplast that has got some stretchiness. And uh, you apply it without pulling the tape tight. So you place the tape on rather than stretching it. So in other words, you don't pull the tape before putting it across. You just place it around at, the, at, the, at where it is. So you put, it, put the tape on at two levels. And we usually use it on the volar um, surface. So you can see it's not being pulled in too tight. It, the, um, the elastoplast isn't act, uh, acting as a tourniquet and restricting the finger too much. You might want to have had this a little bit shorter so that it doesn't go beyond the end of the finger because that can be annoying. But the patient is still able to flex at the MCP joint. And the important thing is they're able to use all the rest of their fingers. So the fact that they've got a painful um, fracture in this finger isn't stopping them from using the rest of their hand. So it's better from that perspective in, in, uh, in order to keep the rest of the hand functional and also allow the patient to do other things that they need to. As I said, it can be bent. So if, for instance, you had a, a patient uh, who you wanted to keep in the position of safe immobilization, you can then use a, a piece that you bend where it's going to be across the MCP joint. So you would be able to bend it there and tape it on like that. And then they'd still be able to move the wrist um, and you cut it to the length uh, that was required for that. So it's quite versatile and can be used for many things. If you're using it, uh, so mallet injuries, for instance, we usually use the, the, the um, off-the-shelf mallet splints, but sometimes they don't fit. So again, the Zimmer splint is good for that, and you can do that a shorter then so that it immobilises the DIP joint, but leaves the PIP joint free.